Amen, amen. You heard it, Smith. Hey, I just want to encourage all of you today that there is no shame in getting directions from Box. Come on, man. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good stuff. But you know, I have to say, I'm not sure that all those kids are telling the truth. Because I thought I heard one say they like salad and other greens. Come on, we know that's not true. Come on now. No, come on, give our moms another hand. Awesome. Turn over to Genesis chapter 5. Going to continue with this series. I got two more weeks after today on this series. Listen, I hope that you have been learning how to be in sync with God. Learning how to hear from God, how to talk with God. We're going to talk about walking with God today, what that looks like, what it is. You know, uh, and then, you know, in the next couple of weeks, uh, listen, you can't walk with God without the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't be walking with God without the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the promise. Jesus said, look, I'm going to go to the Father, but when I go, he's going to, it's to your advantage. He's going to send the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about what that is and, and how we can walk in the Spirit after that, and, and uh, it's going to be good. So I hope that you have been learning and will continue to learn through this series. I know that I have. So today, we're going to be talking about walking with God, and when I think about that phrase, walking with God, you know, what does it mean? You know, when I'm walking with God, is God right here next to me? No, He's inside of me. I have an awareness of His presence. I'm walking with an attitude of faith wherever I go that, that God hears me, He's with me, that He exists, that God, it's His good pleasure to give me the kingdom, that every good gift comes from Him. Just walking with an attitude all the time, making time for God. Listen, if you're walking with God, you're making time with God. That you're not just walking through this life on your own or with your own selfish attitudes, but you're walking through this life with an awareness of His presence. So that's what it is to walk with God, and we're going to be looking at that today. So Father, we thank You so much for Your Word and Your truth, and as we look into Your Word, Father, I thank You that Your Word does not return void. Father, that when we hear your word today, Father, it will impart wisdom. It'll give insight. Father, that we will receive faith by hearing your word today because faith comes by hearing your word. Father, that when we have faith, it pleases you. Father, we can walk with you with that, that faith of knowing who you are, that you exist, that you're with us, Father, and it's your pleasure, Father, that when we come to you, that when we seek you, we find you. Father, so we just give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So with walking with God, are we walking to God? And if not, how can we walk with God? So in Genesis chapter 5, beginning in verse 21, we hear of a man that I haven't heard that much about through the years. I mean, I know of Enoch, and, but you know, it's just, there's not a lot in Scripture about Enoch. As a matter of fact, I usually share this passage whenever I, uh, I'm at a funeral service and, and speaking and sharing about someone who knew the Lord because it's such a, a great statement that is said about Enoch about his life and the legacy that he left, even though we just see a, a little snippet of who Enoch was. But in Genesis 5, it's a genea genealogy that we're, we're reading here from Adam to Noah, and it lists about 10 generations, and sixth in that generation is a man named Enoch. And he was the son of Jared, and it says this. It says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, it says Enoch walked with God. So he was 65 years old, he had Methuselah, was uh, given his son there. And then it says he walked with God. Enoch walked with God. It says 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Then in verse 24, it says again, and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. So we see here that through this passage that Enoch was the son of Jared, we see a little bit of things about him, that, that he had sons and daughters, and he had his first uh, child, Methuselah, at 65, and he had other sons and daughters, and lived 365, and he was not because God took him. But there's something else in that passage that is significant, and it must be because it was mentioned at least twice about Enoch. It says that Enoch walked with God. So this was significant. It's worth mentioning here uh, an important part of this man's life that we know so little about. He walked with God. So what does that mean? And, and, and what did he do that, that gave him the legacy, the testimony that, that was written about him? And the others, there wasn't things written about like there was about him. Some, when you read about the begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so, you know nothing about them. But yet it almost seems as if there was a pause in Enoch's life or his legacy that was written down to make a point that he walked with God. What does that look like? What can we learn from Enoch? And, and how do we walk with God? 
And, and to, to have that highlighted in his life. So let's look at that. The first point is this. Number one, let's walk like Enoch. So what is that? It says he walked with God. So what does it mean? So I looked at the word with. Everybody say with. It says he walked with God. So what did he do there with God that was so significant? The word with is from the word eth. And it means this, near. So he walked near God or together. He walked together with God. We could say in step or in sync with God. So he walked near God. And listen, I don't believe that God was physically present there next to him in, in body form that he was walking with Enoch. But I believe that Enoch walked in a way that he walked aware of God's presence that God was right there with him. He was walking together with God. In other words, he was not walking through life on his own mission without the awareness that God was there with him everywhere he went. What a great way to walk in our life and live life with this, this awareness that God is right there with me everywhere I go. And not just with me, but there to, to communicate with and I can talk to him and he can talk to me as we talked about before. But I also see this, if we're walking together, he's not walking ahead of God, he's not walking behind God, but he's staying up with God. And I think we have to walk that way in our life, a way that, look, I don't want to get ahead of God, I don't want to get behind God. When we see, read about Paul the Apostle, that he would want to go places, but the Holy Spirit prohibited him to go, then it would give him permission to go other places. In other words, Enoch, I believe, like Paul, was not getting ahead of God or behind God. You know, sometimes I will go uh, somewhere with Ava. Well, a lot of times I go somewhere with Ava. But we'll go places and we'll walk and we'll walk. And I noticed years ago that she didn't walk as fast as I do, right? Her steps are a little smaller. So I, I consciously, when I walk, I would kind of put one foot in the other when I, uh, in front of the other when I walk, but I do it at a slower place, I, a pace. I didn't say anything to, her, but she, anything to her, but she noticed that I was doing that. And she said, hey, you're walking so I can stay up with you. I said, yeah, I am doing that. You know, I was walking, kind of like when you take that test, you know. <laughs> Putting one foot in front of the other. But, you know, I was doing that so that she, she wouldn't have to walk so fast so that we could walk together. And I still do that. Are y'all with me? And I think, Lord, am I, if I do it with Ava, am I doing it with you? Come on. When I walk through life, am I going, am I walking too slow behind you? Am I, am I staying with you, Father? I don't want to get ahead of you. I don't want to get behind you, but I want to walk with you. I don't want to run my life at such a pace that I don't have time for you or I'm out of breath and I can't talk to you. Anybody, anybody ever felt that way? No? Okay. Me, just me one. Thank you so much. But you know, I, I used to run. How many of you like to run? And for, I think we only had one person. Again, one person. Two, three. You know, I used to run. I used to jog. But you know, when I jog, did jog, you know, you can't really have a conversation when you're jogging. But when I would jog, I would think, I'd process things, my mind's working. But if somebody would ever say, look, I wanna, hey, I'll run with you, I'll jog. When you're jogging, look, you can run with me, but don't try to talk to me because I can't hold a conversation while I'm running. Come on. I get out of breath. You can't, you, yeah, yeah, me too. I was, you know, I, yeah, you know, the other day I went to, I can't, I can't do it. But I can walk with you and do that. I can walk with you. I can hold a conversation when, when I do that. And, and I think with God, Lord, I ask myself sometimes, am I going through life at a pace so fast that I'm not slowing down so that I can have a conversation with you, Father? Am I walking through life with an awareness that you're with me, that you're right there beside me? I remember whenever I would jog years ago, I, Ryan, when he was little, he was about five or six years old. And, you know, everywhere I went, he wanted to go, which is great, you know. Daddy, where are you going? I want to go. So if I would go jogging, he goes, hey, we're going to go jogging. I want to go with you. So he, he obviously couldn't keep up with me. So I bought this jogging stroller. I have a picture of it. I bought this jogging stroller so that I could run and have him ride. Look at that. Now he's about what, 23 now. But anyway, so he'd run. And he would ride in it, and I would jog, and I could get my, get my jog on. And he'd want to talk to me the whole time. I'm like, and so I had to stop and slow down. He didn't want to get out and run away. It was just time spent with Ryan. Come on, it wasn't really jogging. Amen. But that was great. But I said, Lord, am I doing, am I taking time to spend with you? Come on. Do you know that God wants to spend time with you? He wants to communicate with you. But when I look at Enoch and it says he walked with God, I, I see him in that way. Not that he was a jogger. But I see him going through life with this constant communication and talking with God, living life at a pace and, and understanding and communicating with God. And when I think about this, I think about, you know, this walking idea. But, you know, we're told in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Therefore, 
We also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So yeah, we want to walk with God, but there's this idea of running. But you know, there's a difference between a sprint and an endurance race. You know, if you're sprinting, you're at a line, you're ready to go, the, 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 the alarm goes off, the sound goes off, and man, you're off and running, and you're only thinking about one thing, you're not thinking about anything else around you, you just got your eyes, and you're, you're on your way. But even then, in this, when it talks about an endurance race, run with endurance. If you're going to run with endurance, you have to pace yourself. Am I right? You, there's a difference between a sprint. You know, when you think and, and watch the Olympics, you have a sprint. Maybe you have a, a, a 400, a 100-meter sprint. But then you have the long distance races, 3,000, 10,000 meter. Have you ever watched those races? I'm sure you have. And when we're, Ava and I will watch them and um, we'll see them. And when they do that, someone will get the idea that they're going to take off and get way in front of the pack. And you know, we're sitting there on our couch with our tea and watching them run. And we're just telling them, run, go faster. <laughs> While we're sitting on our couch, drinking our tea. Come on, right? <laughs> but we think, why can't the others catch up? right? They need to pick up the pace. They need to run. But see, they understand, no, we'll let that person go on because they're not going to endure. They're going to run out of steam. And sure enough, man, you'll see it. The one that's right way ahead, they start to slow down. The pack starts to, to catch up. The ones that were pacing their self begin to kick in and catch up. Are you with me? And I think, Lord, when I go through life, am I going so fast that I'm running out of steam? Or am I running a race with endurance and walking in sync with you, walking in step with you? Father, help me to walk that way, to walk, so that I can walk for victory. Amen? Come on, give him praise. So I believe this is how Enoch walked in his life. The second thing is this. Let's walk by faith. Walk by faith. It says Enoch walked with God. Again, Scripture doesn't say that he was physically walking with God, but, but God, Enoch walked with God in a sense that he believed he was there the whole time. Hebrews 11.5, listen to this. Here's something else we, we see in the New Testament here about Enoch. And, and right here in Hebrews 11, it's talking about the, these fathers of faith, if you will. The ones, in other words, that were marked, that have gone before us, that are marked to say, you know what, follow their example. The things that they have done, you can do these things or should do these things as well. And so in Hebrews 11, 5, it says this, by faith, everybody say faith, faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. He was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. He had this legacy. This was said about him, that he pleased God. So here's a man named Enoch that walked with God, and it was a testimony that he left behind that he pleased God. And we know how he pleased God because it goes on and says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. How did he please God? Because he walked by faith. He walked by faith, believing that God existed, believing that God was there with him. But listen to what it says here. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, believe that God exists. And it goes on and says this, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You see, when I think about this, <clears throat> I believe Enoch pleased God because he walked with God, and he walked by faith towards God. In other words, he believed that God existed, that he was present, that he was there. But not just that, because I can say, you know, how many of us believe that God exists? Oh, I do. I believe he exists. But do we go the step farther and say, I not only believe that he exists, but I believe that, that he is a rewarder to me when I go to him in faith and ask him for the things that I need. Come on. That that's the kind of man that Enoch was. He walked by faith in a sense that, that he could go to God and ask what he needed and God would give him the things that he needed. Lord, am I walking in that way? Or am I living a life without some things that I'm in need of because I don't have the faith to go to you and ask, Father, I need to know you in a way that knows that I can come to you at any time and you give me the things that I ask, the things that I'm in need of. Come on now. God is good. You see, this is what pleases God. Belief that, that he exists and, and understanding that it's, it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom of heaven. And when I read that in, in, in Luke 12, it's the give us the kingdom of heaven. It's his pleasure to give us the things that he has, that he has for us. He gives every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. So I believe this is the kind of relationship that Enoch had with God. This is why he had a, a legacy and a testimony, that he lived a life at a, at a, in a way that pleased God, that he had faith in God. 
communicating, meditating with God. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 says this, so we're always confident. Paul is speaking to the church here and say, look, we're always stable and confident and assured of this, knowing that while we're at home in this body, we're absent from the Lord. In other words, I'm here in this body, but, and God's not right here physically with me, but he is here. And it says, why? For we walk by faith and not sight. So we're confident that we can walk and believe in the things we can't see. I believe that God exists even though I can't see him. I believe he has the provisions I need even though I can't see them. I believe he has the healing that I need even though I don't see or feel it yet. I believe the, this, this is the kind of walk that pleases God, that we have that kind of faith, that he rewards those that seek him. You know, I was having a conversation this week with uh, Michael Reynolds, the prayer coordinator. And, you know, by the way, let me just say, when we have a prayer team up here for you guys, they, they have faith. They're prayed up, and they want to pray, and they want to see God do some things in your life. Amen? And so Michael was talking to me about this, and just he was reading a book about uh, increasing faith, and, 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 and we were just sharing our hearts about it, is how, man, you know, I'm so thankful for the testimonies and the things that we see that God is doing, the, the healings, the salvation, the provision that we see all the time in the body of Christ. But even with all that, listen, I know there's so much more that God wants to do that he can do, but it's a matter of our faith increasing. And listen, faith comes by hear, uh, hearing the word of God. I believe you being here today and hearing God's word is increasing your faith. Amen. Amen. If you believe that, give him praise. <laughs> but you know, Enoch, I believe this is what it was highlighted about Enoch, that he had that kind of faith, that when he went to God and applied his faith towards God, that God showed up, manifested himself in his life. You know, something that's worth noting here, when you look at this, this genealogy of Enoch, Enoch, we have this genealogy, and he was sixth in, after Adam. This is before Moses. So in other words, this is before the law that was written down to give instruction to the people of God. So if you think about it, then how did he know about God? And I love this because we had the, the baby uh, child dedications here this morning. Listen, Enoch knew about God and had faith in God because it was passed on to him, come on, by somebody before him, that it was taught to him, that it was spoken to him, that it was lived before him, and he was able to do it himself. You see, this is the kind of uh, legacy that he leaves behind that was for him, that he saw these things, not because he read it. Listen, I'm so thankful we have the God's Word, and it's so important. But you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful when we live it before others, and they see it being lived out by somebody else. That's the kind of legacy that we can pass on. Amen? Amen. The third thing is this. Choose to walk with God. You see, we have a choice to walk with God. God's not forcing us to walk with him, but it's our choice. He, he went to the disciples before they followed him and said, you know, take up your cross and follow me. And they chose to drop their nets, stop what they were doing, and live a life and following and listening to him, the, the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and wanted to know how to receive eternal life. <clears throat> he chose not to. Then Jesus would teach things. Some would stop following. Some would continue following. But it's a choice that we all have. Look at Amos 3.3. 3. So we want to walk with God as Enoch walked with God. And in Amos 3.3, 3, it asks a question here. It's a rhetorical question. It's a question that actually has a point behind it. And it says this in Amos 3.3. 3, it says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Can two walk together unless they are agreed? That's a question, but what's the answer? No. They can't walk together if they're not in unity, in sync, in agreement together. I could say it this way, can two walk together unless they are in sync? The answer is no. So when I look at that word agreed, and we, we dissect that word a little bit, it's from the word, the Hebrew word ya'ad, and it means this, fixed or attached, in sync. In other words, can two walk together unless they're fixed together? They're in unity it also means this, can two walk together unless they're agreed, or can two walk together unless they are betrothed or, or married together? You see, think about it this way. If, if, if you're married together, there needs to be some communication, some syncing going on, right? You know, if, if I said, yeah, you know, Ava's my wife, well, can you tell me a little about, bit about her? No, not really. I don't really talk to her that much. <laughs> you know, that would be weird, right? That'd be strange. You know, but what do we know about God? Are we in agreement with Him? Are we synced up with Him? Are we listening to Him and spending time with Him? Can two walk together unless they, they are agreed? That's why I agree with everything Ava says. 
on Mother's Day especially. Come on now. now. <laughs> but listen to this. Here's what's fascinating, that word. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? But it also means this. It means this, to meet by appointment. And that's important because what it's asking here is can two be in unity? Can two walk together? Can two be in sync together or in step if they are not in agreement? If they're, can two walk together if they're not meeting by appointment? In other words, having some conversation going on. Think about it, you know, with your spouse. You know, that, that how many times a day do you communicate on your device or phone? And I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about the days before we had cell phones, you know. But it's like, what are you doing? Well, you know, what are you doing today? You're going to work. When are you getting off? Okay, what's for dinner? I mean, this constant community, are you with me? This constant agreeing, communication, getting in sync with one another so that you're on the same page. Somebody asked me to, if somebody asked me to do something, I'm like, yeah, but let me first check with Ava and see what she, is, what she has going on that particular day. How many of you know that's wisdom right there? Come on, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's wisdom right there. What do you, you listen. So when you think about that, can we walk with God if we're not meeting by appointment with Him? If we are not agreed, if we're not spending time to say, Lord, what do you want for my life today? Lord, what's, what's, what is in your word that I can read today that's going to stand out to me, that's going to help guide and lead me today? Are we making time for God in our schedule, in our appointment with Him? Who are we meeting with? Who are we walking with? Listen, you know, you can tell who you've been hanging out with. You know, in our day, who, where are our appointments? Where are, are we going? Who are we talking to? Who are we listening to? What social media are we on? Entertainment, all these things, uh, you know, can come into play. That's, you know, you can tell who you've been hanging out with, right? Because you rub off. You know, married people, when they've been together a long time, they start to act alike. Come on. Am I right? No, no, not so much. Listen. <laughs> but how about this, too? How many of you know you can tell when your kids have been hanging out with other kids? Come on. Come on, you can tell. Come on, you can tell. So when I think about this, I, I'm thinking, Lord, who, who, who's shaping me and molding me and rubbing off on me? You know, you think about Peter, whatever. He was, uh, Jesus said, you're going to de deny me. He says, no, not me. I'm not going to deny you. And they heard him and said, hey, wait a minute. I can tell by the way you talk. Come on. I know he was a Galilean, he had an accent, but I could tell by the way you talk, you're, you've been hanging out with Jesus, so you're one of them. No, not me, not me. You know, I hope that people can tell by the way I talk that I've been hanging out with Jesus. Come on, come on. Listen, I hope that people can tell that I've been hanging out with Jesus by the way I handle the circumstances I face. Come on. I hope that people can tell I've been hanging out with Jesus when something happens in my life and the way I respond to it, that I respond the way he did or would. It's going to shape me and mold me. It's going to, it, listen, when we choose to walk with him, it'll change the way we talk. It'll change our speech. It'll change our attitude. It'll change our outcome. It'll change uh, our, our heart in our life. How many of you want to be changed? Come on. We need to be, come on, let's be like Enoch. Let's let it, I want it to be said about me. I want it to be said about all of us that we walked with God. That, that it's a testimony that we have in our life by the way we respond, the way we do things, the way we have faith in Him, the way we can call upon Him and see Him manifest Himself in our life, that we have walked with Him. Amen. Give Him praise as the worship team comes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can stand with me.